I want to tell you one more story before I get out of here about the night I met a guy named Bill Clinton. Now, I don't, some of you know who that is? For, the, for those of you that don't, he was president of the United States from 1993 until 2001, and he is a smooth and fantastic hillbilly who should be declared emperor of the United States of America. <laughs> now, I know you know who Bill Clinton is, but I was doing a show at a college, and I mentioned Bill Clinton, and, like, they kind of didn't know who he was. Like, sorry, they knew the name, right? But they only knew this 2015 Bill Clinton who's a very different Bill Clinton. Have you seen his ass lately? What the hell is he trying to pull? He's all thin now, and he wears these little tight suits, and he's got these grandpa reading glasses, like, hey, I can't do nothing to nobody no more, you know? <laughs> oh, me, I'm just an old, old man. I don't have the appetites, you know? And he's always flying around the world with Bill Gates trying to cure AIDS. <laughs> that is not the Bill Clinton that we all signed up for 20 years ago. Our Bill Clinton was like a big, fat Buddy Garrity from Friday Night Lights-looking guy who played the saxophone on Arsenio, and his work in the STD community was not in curing anything at that time. <laughs> that was the man we all elected president. That was the Bill Clinton that I met. I got to meet Bill Clinton when he was Governor Clinton in 1992, when he was first running for president. And I got to meet Bill Clinton because my parents had gone to the same college as Bill Clinton. They were a little younger, but they went to the same college. So when he was first running for president, he would have all these big, like, alumni fundraisers, and everyone who went was invited to go. Now, this was really cool for a couple reasons. One, I got to meet Bill Clinton. But two, I got to watch my parents watch someone they went to school with become the president. <laughs> And that is super funny to see, because think about some of the people you went to school with. Now imagine they're becoming the president. Imagine Sam was becoming the president. It would stir up strong emotions. And my parents had very different opinions on Bill Clinton. My mom loved Bill Clinton. Because Bill Clinton was always a really charismatic, handsome guy. I mean, think about how many women he got in the 1990s when he looked like Frank Caliendo doing John Madden. Now, imagine him as a college student. And my mom tells me that there was this sort of chivalrous policy on campus back then where uh, late at night, if female students were leaving the library unaccompanied, male students were encouraged to wait out in front and offer to walk them home. That sounds good, right? <laughs> so my mom tells me that Bill Clinton would be out in front of the library every single night, just being like, hey, can I walk you home? 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 And one night, my mom was leaving the library, and Bill Clinton was like, hey, can I walk you home? And my mom was like, hell yes. So this is absolutely true. My mom, little Ellen Stanton, walked arm in arm with Bill Clinton to her dorm, and she was like, you know, I wanted to invite him up for a beer. And I was like, thanks, I'm nine. But her roommate was upstairs, so she lost her chance with Bill Clinton. Now, my dad, on the other hand, hated Bill Clinton because my parents were dating during this time. And also, my dad's a much more, like, morally upright, conservative kind of guy. He always told me that he hated it in college that Bill Clinton could, quote, get away with anything. Can you imagine how he felt later? <laughs> so one day, this invitation arrives for a fundraiser where you can meet Bill Clinton. My mom opens it first, and she goes, oh, we have to go. We have to go see Bill. And without looking up at her, my dad just says, why? <laughs> it's not like he's gonna remember you. <laughs> One black coffee. <laughs> Same motherfucker. So my mom says, fine, I'll go and I'll take John. And I was like, hell yeah. And I slid in the room in my first communion suit, ready to go. Because I loved Bill Clinton. I was 10 years old. If you were a kid when Bill Clinton was first released, it was the most exciting thing ever. 
We'd never seen a cool politician before. And he would go on MTV and he'd have cool answers to kids' questions. They'd be like, Governor, what's your favorite food? And he'd be like, I don't know, fries. And we'd be like, yeah, we eat fries. I learned to play his campaign song on the piano. It was Don't Stop by Fleetwood Mac. From Rumors, an album written by and for people cheating on each other. He let us know who he was right away. So I went with my mom as her date to reconnect with Governor Bill Clinton. We walked into the ballroom. It was a big hotel ballroom. It was the Palmer House Hilton, big Hilton hotel ballroom. Walked into the ballroom, it was packed with people. It's actually, it's the ballroom from the end of the movie, The Fugitive, remember? So, that ballroom. So, my mom and I walk in, it's packed with people. Uh, the, sorry, the end where uh, Harrison Ford has Dr. Richard Kimball uh, 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 burst in to confront Dr. Charles Nichols, right? Okay, so, that ballroom, so. My mom and I walk in, it's packed with people. Why does Kimball confront Nichols? Well, I know we all know this, but, no, no, but, 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 Kimball, he found out that Nichols, along with Devlin McGregor and Lentz, who's mysteriously died, they had hired Frederick Sykes, the one-armed man, to kill Kimball. Kimball's wife wasn't even the target, I know we all know this, but they were gonna kill Kimball because he wasn't gonna approve certain liver samples to pass RUD90. So Kimball finds out about all of this, and of course he's furious, and he bursts in the ballroom and he goes, you switched the samples! And Dr. Nichols is like, uh, lady sent Gentlemen, my friend, Dr. Richard Campbell. What accent did that guy have, by the way? He goes, you switched the samples and you doctored your research so that you could have Provasic. Anyway, so it's that ballroom. So we walk into that ballroom. It was packed with people. It was packed with people. A real who's not of Chicago celebrities. Walter Jacobson was there. <laughs> Walter Jacobson was the local Fox anchor. He'd do fun things where he'd go undercover as a homeless person. And he'd be like, oh, what time is the soup? And they'd be like, man, you're Walter Jacobson. He was there. <laughs> Everybody. And on the far side of the ballroom, under a spotlight, we saw a little bit of silver hair. And it was him, Bill Clinton, the comeback kid but he was surrounded by reporters and photographers and Secret Service. So what are you gonna do? Well, if you're my mom, you ball up the back of my sport coat and you push me forward like a human shield. And then you start jogging while yelling, this 10 year old boy has to meet the next president of the United States. Kind of implying that I might be dying. My feet were not on the ground. She was swinging me like a snowplow. I was just mowing down fat Chicago Democrats. I pushed past all the reporters. I pushed past all the photographers. We pushed past all the Secret Service. We land at Bill Clinton's feet. Bill Clinton turns, looks at my mom and says, hey, Ellen, cause he never forgets a bitch ever. <laughs> My mom melts. She goes, hi, Bill. <laughs> then it is revealed that she has no plan. So she pushes me towards Clinton and she goes, this is my son, John, and he's also going to be president. And I was like, what the hell are you talking about? I'm not gonna be president. And I know now that I'm definitely never gonna be president. Not unless everyone gets real cool about a bunch of stuff really quickly. Based on my 10-year-old memory, Bill Clinton is about 13 feet tall. <laughs> and he leaned down because, well, I was wearing this button that I bought outside the fundraiser. It was a cartoon button of George H.W. Bush, and it had a quail flying over his head, and it was shitting on his head, <laughs> and it said bird-brained, and I thought it was very funny. <laughs> and Bill Clinton leaned down so that only I could hear, and he said, hey, man, I like your button. <laughs> and I said, you can do whatever you want forever. <laughs> and he took my advice. And it was the best night of my entire life. And I got home that night 
I got home that night and my dad was still awake, like reading angry under one lamp, just like, Burr. and I went up to him and I went, hey, I'm gonna be a Democrat. <laughs> and I'm gonna vote for Bill Clinton. And without looking up at me, my dad just said, you have the moral backbone of a chocolate eclair. <laughs> You know how you talk to a child? <laughs> so here's the end of that story. That was 1992. Let's flash forward five years to 1997. It is now 1997. I am a sophomore in high school. Bill Clinton is in his second term as president. And on the morning that the Monica Lewinsky scandal breaks on the cover of the New York Times, it had been on the Drudge Report, and then it was on the cover of the New York Times. That morning, I wake up to the newspaper hitting me in the face. I am a teenager asleep in bed, and the newspaper hits me in the face and falls open on my stomach, and I open my eyes to see my dad standing there dressed for work, and he says, the other shoe just dropped. <laughs> And then my dad went into work to find out that his law firm had been hired to defend Bill Clinton. <laughs> Good night, Chicago.